Hello everyone, I'm Ranger Stephanie from Richmond National Battlefield Park and Maggie L. Walker National Historic Site. And I am here today to do some online learning with you uh, to teach you, um, especially third graders, a little bit more about grid maps. That's right. We are going to do some grid mapping um, today, a program called Mills, Water Wheels, and Raceways. But before we get started, there's a couple things you are going to need in order to do this activity. They're really simple. One, print off the Mills, Water Wheels, and Raceways sheet. So you will need to print this off. It is two-sided. But if you print two pages, that is perfectly fine. Actually, it's a little easier um, if you don't have to flip your page back and forth. Um, you will need a writing utensil. You can use a pencil or you can use a pen. It doesn't matter. You also need three crayons. That's right, folks. Three crayons. One red, one blue, and one yellow. So go ahead and grab those materials. If you need to pause me at any time during this, please feel free. Um, I usually give a little time uh, to do the activity as we move along. So go ahead, gather your materials that you're going to need, and meet me right back here. Okay, now that you have got your materials together, let's go ahead and take a look at a grid map. So this is a grid map. There are, uh, takes a map, a grid map takes a map and breaks it down into small little squares or quadrants to look at uh, a little bit, a little piece of the map instead of the whole map. So there's numbers across the top and letters down the side. Now the best way to use a grid map is if you use your index fingers or your pointers. So go ahead, you are going to put uh, a finger on the letter A and a uh, finger on the number four. So you are going to count over four spaces from the letter A. One, two, three, four. And then slide your other finger down until you guys meet in the middle. And you're in the middle of the canal of canal then. So it breaks it down into the small quadrant. So I say I need to get to box E4. I put one finger on the number E, or the letter E, sorry, and one on the number four, count over four spaces from uh, the letter E. One, two, three, four. Slide your number four finger down till they meet, and you will find what building? You're gonna find the Gun Foundry. The Gun Foundry is where the National Park for Richmond National Battlefield Park's main visitor center is, at Historic Tredegar is where it's located in the Gun Foundry. So there you have that. And we're going to go ahead and work through our worksheet um, to follow along and get answers from our grid map. So we're going to start with question number one. Question number one reads, what building is in box A2? Once again, you're going to use your fingers, put one on the letter A, one on the number two, count over two boxes from the letter A, one, two, slide your fingers till they touch. What building is in box A2? The Rutherford Flower Spike Mill. So go ahead and take your writing utensil, your pencil or your pen, and you're going to answer question number one, which is Rutherford. Flower Spike Mill. Now, that seems like a unique mill to operate in, okay? So we have our Flower Spike Mill. Now, when we talk about flower, are we talking about the flower you pick out of a garden or the flower you make pizza dough with? Hmm. The flower you make pizza dough with. So here we have flour that you can uh, make pizza dough with. They grind down wheat um, to make uh, flour. Now, what do we call two words that sound the same but are spelled differently? See, the flour we pick out of a garden is spelled F-L-O-W-E-R. And the flour we're talking about is spelled F-L-O-W-E-R. 
are. Do you know what they're called? They're called a homophone. So two words that sound the same but spelled differently are called a homophone. And this is the flower that we're talking about today. And the other thing that they're making in the same mill is called a spike. So here is a spike that they're making. It is a railroad spike. And this is from Historic Tredegar. It's found um, at Historic Tredegar. So this is a unique little artifact that's very sharp on the bottom. Um, very heavy, it's made out of iron. So it's iron is a metal, so it is very hard. So they're making these two things in that mill. Hmm. Let's go on to question number two. In which box is the flour mill 1854 to 1863? This was called the Crenshaw Flour Woolen Mill. All right, folks, we are looking for the grid box now. We are looking for that answer. We are looking for the flour mill that operated from 1854 to 1863, also known as the Crenshaw Flour Woolen Mill. Let's see if you guys can find it. That's right, box D2. So if we count over, one, two, slide our fingers till they touch, there it is, the Crenshaw Flower Woolen Mill, 18, uh, 1854 to 1863. So our answer for question number two is D-2. So there we go, we wrote it in D-2. Now we are going to go to question number, oh, before we move on, what's a woolen mill? Wool comes from sheep. So here is some wool from sheep and they are taking this wool and they're going to uh, work it until it becomes uh, a material that they can make a blanket out of or cloth out of. So this is a wool, part of a wool blanket. So it's a little rough. Uh, wool's very itchy, scratchy, and a lot of times we wear wool in winter uh, because wool is nice and warm, keeps you very warm, um, and it also wicks away sweat. So wool right here. Awesome. We already talked about flour that they're also making there um, on the question number one. So let's move on to question number three. Go to box B2. B as in boy, two. What year did the rolling mill open? So taking our index fingers, one on the uh, letter B, one on the number two, count over two boxes, one, two, slide our fingers till they touch, right here. What year did the rolling mill open? That's right, 1837. Now there is a second number on here. This is 18, uh, 1869. What does that number mean? It means when it closed or stopped operating. But our answer that we need for question number three is 1837. So go ahead and write in 1837. Oh man, question number four looks pretty, pretty big. What runs through all of these boxes? A2, B2, C2, D2, and E2. So what runs through all of these boxes? A2, B2, C2, D2, and E2. Go ahead, see if you can find the answer. It's labeled, and you can find the label in C2. A raceway. Let's so go ahead, take your writing utensil, utensil and write in race way. Wait a minute. Did I just take two words and put them together to make one word? What's that called? A compound word. I absolutely love compound words and I have not met a ranger who does not like compound words because us rangers like to eat food and the food we like to eat, there's a lot of compound words like pancakes, cupcakes, 
strawberries, watermelon, those are all compound words. So when I need to think of a compound word, I like to think with my stomach. Awesome. Let's see if we can find other compound words on our worksheet. Let's move on to question number five. Uh, color the water wheels yellow. How many water wheels are on this map? So we need our crayon, our yellow crayon, and we need to identify what a water wheel looks like on our map. Can you find where it's labeled a water wheel? If you look in box D3, you can find the answer. Water wheel. It's kind of this small zebra looking box is a water wheel. So go ahead and color in oh, the water wheels. It's okay, I'm not a very good colorer, but I'm sure you guys are professionals. I'm gonna do my best. And that's all we ask for. Here we go, arrange your stuff. Water wheels are really interesting. And if we were on, on site at our historic Tredegar location, you would be able to see a water wheel. Now, a water wheel, it has, a, has water coming over the top and then drops down onto the water wheel, which makes a uh, wheel spin. So it starts to spin. And these are my water wheels that I colored in. Did you color in yours? Now it's asking us for question number five, how many water wheels are on this map? One, two, three, four, five, six, six water wheels. So our answer for number five is the number six. So go ahead, write that answer in. Great job. Now, question number six, whew, it's asking us, in which box will you find a water wheel? Uh-oh, we have six water wheels on our map. It's asking us for what grid box is there a water wheel in? So pick your favorite water wheel and let's label that one uh, on, in your answer sheet. So I'm gonna pick uh, my favorite water wheel, which is C2. That is my favorite water wheel. And so I'm gonna write that answer in. So for question number six, I'm putting in C2. However, you could put in any of these. You could put in A2, you could put in B2, even B1 has a water wheel. Uh, C2, of course, D2 or D3 has a water wheel in it. So you could write any of those down as your answer. Now, what did water wheels do? That is the big question. What did water wheels do? So, as I said, water um, is spinning, and I'm going to try my best. See, there you go. There is a water wheel right there, spinning. Water is coming over the top and pushing the water wheel around so it spins. So these water wheels would be attached to these big long pipes. As you can see, there is a pipe right there, and it would run into a building and that pipe would turn. And what do you think it's going to be turning inside the buildings? Machines. So this is a long time ago. In the 1800s, they didn't have electricity. They didn't have a light switch they could turn on in order to turn their machines on. So they used water wheels to power the machines inside. So what did the water wheels do? They created power. So go ahead and write that in for question number six, created power. Awesome. Let's move on to question number seven. Color the Kanawa Canal, the James River, and all the raceways blue. Boom, here we go. Now this is a lot of coloring. So Ranger Steph is going to try her very best to get this coloring completed. All right, so here we go. Once again, you wanna color 
uh, the canal a canal which is up at the top the raceways which we learned about that run all the way through here down into the James River we got to make sure all our water wheels have water going to them or they're not working so here we go Ranger Steph trying to do her best it's all I ask if parents, if I, you need to pause so that your child has plenty of time to finish coloring, please go ahead, pause me. I will still be here when you hit play again. Awesome. I'm trying, guys. I'm trying. Here we go. Here we go. All right. Getting my James River all colored in. Like I said, I'm not a good colorer, so hopefully you guys have prettier than I do. So there I have it. I colored the canal a canal, all the raceways, and the James River blue. Now, if we didn't have water flowing to our water wheels, would they spin? No, which means they can't create power. So the second question um, to number seven is why was water so important to this site? Well, if you don't have water, you don't have power. Because without water, th these water wheels won't turn, which means the machines won't work. So, it's kind of the same answer as number six. Water was so important to the site because it created power. So go ahead and put created power. Awesome. Let's move on to our final question, which is number eight. Color the mills red. How many mills are on this map? Whew. There are several little buildings in here. Some are labeled mills, some are not. So make sure you're coloring the ones that are labeled mills red. Color, take your time. Some of them are kind of tricky. Here I am coloring. Awesome job, everyone. Okay. And there we have it. All the mills that are colored red. There are two buildings, or three actually, that are not labeled mills. We have uh, the Virginia Foundry, a machine shop, and the Gun Foundry. Those are not mills. However, we have the Rutherford Flower Spike Mill we talked about, the, uh, the Rolling Mill, the Crenshaw Flower Woolen Mill, we have a uh, Cotton Mill, and a Corn Mill. We didn't get to talk about the Cotton Mill and the Corn Mill. So the Cotton Mill is taking cotton like this, a raw material, and making it just like they did with the wool into a material that they can um, create like a textile with, a fabric with. So this is what a lot of our clothes are made out of, is cotton. It comes from this and it's turned into this, or into my uniform, or into my, my uh, quilt that's hanging behind me. So here you go. The corn mill is taking corn and grinding it up to make cornmeal. This is not cheese, I get that a lot. It is not cheese, it's cornmeal. If you've ever had uh, a hush puppy, then you've ate cornmeal. Or if you've ever had um, cornbread, then you've had cornmeal. Um, it's grind up corn into cornmeal. It's almost like a flour. Awesome. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that is all I have for grid mapping for today. I hope that you can get out and check out other maps. Even road maps have grid maps on them because road maps are very big and they take this big map and make it into smaller sections so you can look for your answer and what you're trying to find smaller. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you again for joining me, Ranger Steph from Richmond National Battlefield Park and Maggie L. Walker National Historic Site. And I hope that you have a great day of online learning and I hope to see you at the park. Bye-bye.